Before I get into this, I want to I want to really congratulate Casual Connect. So we've been involved with the organization for a long time. We've participated in Seattle. We've participated in Hamburg in their European event. Uh, it's really really good to see them uh, in APAC, which has been a a big area of focus for us for a number of years. And what I'm going to talk a little bit about is how it is that Zynga is thinking about kind of our international community and our international user base. Uh, and it's really for us about making our global games local. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means. So Zynga's mission from the beginning has been about collect, connecting the world through social games. Uh, what people lose sight of when they think about Zynga is the fact that this company is less than five years old. So. You know, it was started in 2007, and over the course of that time has grown from, you know, a handful of co-founders to close to more than 2,800 employees at this point. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the, some of the growth stats we've seen in the course of those five years, but it's pretty eye-opening. Uh, and again, fundamental to the mission has always been connecting the world through social games. Another big part of our objective, so when Mark Pincus, our CEO, founded the company, uh, he saw sort of a secular trend. He sees things that are, are happening on the web historically, which is anytime there's a new vertical that comes along on the web, uh, you know, there are hundreds if not thousands of competitors in that space. And then what happens over time is they kind of, they end up consolidating into a handful of key competitors that you really associate with the different sort of verbs of the internet, right? So if you think about search on the internet, you think about Google. If you think about shopping on the internet, particularly in the US, you think about Amazon.com. And obviously, as you think about social and you think about sharing, uh, Facebook is front of mind. Uh, Zynga sees the same opportunity to define play on the internet uh, and through mobile platforms over time. So in just these five years, Zynga has grown from, to uh, almost 300 million monthly active users and about 65 million daily active players. Uh, and all told, uh, those players are doing about 450 million social interactions per day. Now, what does that mean? Listening to Alexander earlier from Facebook talking about the game development process and that one of their challenges, they see a lot of interesting game developers who are building games that are really compelling gaming experiences that then end up tacking on sort of the social features and functionality. What Zynga has always done well, whatever you may think about games like Farmville and Cityville, what, so, what Zynga has always done well is that those social components have been fundamental to the gameplay. There is no single player version of our games. I guess you could try. It would be decidedly unfun um, and really gets outside of what Zynga sort of aspires to do. These 450 million social interactions per day are our users communicating with each other on a daily basis a number of times through the different channels that we provide. Some interesting fun facts. Uh, so Farmville has 44 million farmers. There are 2 million real life farmers in the United States. There are 500 million acres of virtual farmland that have been farmed. 15 billion sheep have been sheared, and 20 billion trees have been planted in Farmville. In Cityville, more than 5 million virtual businesses, 8 million houses, and 26 million sidewalks have been built, are built each day. Words with Friends processes about 1,000 moves per second. Uh, and in Mafia Wars, over the course of time, you know, social doesn't always mean nice, right? So there have been about 103 million fights that are fought daily in Mafia Wars. That's the bad news. The good news is that there are over 20 million gifts that are given every day as well. So international, back to connecting the world through social games. Uh, Zynga games currently are played in more than 200 countries and territories. Uh, more than two thirds of our DAU actually come from outside of North America. There are about two billion minutes of worldwide play per day. Four billion worldwide neighbor connections. And 400 million worldwide in-game social actions, 400 million worldwide in-game social interactions per day. This is a this is an image that I really like, which is sort of a snapshot looking at our network and looking at all the interactions that are happening around the world. And one of the things that jumps out to me on this is that, you know, in addition to obviously a very strong user base in the U.S., which is where we're based. We have a ma massive user base in the UK and the EU, and we're growing very quickly in a lot of the emerging territories like in Asia Pacific and in Latin America. 
we have offices worldwide. Uh, you know, we continue to be, you know, Zynga has always aspired to sort of build the best global games possible, and we were going to be located wherever the best talent is and wherever the best players are. So, you know, again, one of the reasons that we're so excited for Casual Connect to be in Asia is that, you know, we see an extraordinary, one, an extraordinary number of users coming out of the region, but also as we build out our offices in Beijing, in Bangalore, and in Tokyo, we see an extraordinary amount of talent uh, that we look to leverage in the coming months and years. So how do we built out? How, how do we actually connect the world through social games? And this really gets into the meat of the presentation. There's sort of six main components to what we're doing in order to appeal to the international user. And I'm going to go through each one of these in a little bit more detail. But it's really about access. It's about localization. It's about payments. It's about customer service, community management, and content. And these are sort of the pillars that we use as we're building out our global games to make sure that we're actually speaking to a global audience. The first is accent, access. And this is, this is the stuff that most people find eye-crossingly boring, uh, but is actually incredibly fundamental to, to uh, providing uh, really compelling gameplay to our users. If our games don't load, if people can't play our games, then we've failed. And so what we've done over the course of the last couple of years in particular is really optimize things like our content delivery network, like our file downloader. You know, I, I think there are probably some of you who pay attention to things like our Z Cloud infrastructure and how we've built that out so that people, regardless of what their local infrastructure may look like, can play our games and can play our games and have fun in a very quick period of time. Second is localization. So I said that that Mark Pix's uh, mission has always been connecting the world through local games. I'll, I'll confess to the room that I would say in 2009 and maybe half of 2010, we probably weren't doing a very good job of this. Mostly to do with the fact that you know, we were an extremely young company and we were, we were doing everything we could just to keep, keep everything humming because we had become so successful in such a short period of time. So we didn't have a ton of opportunity to think about anything, quite frankly, much beyond our offices in San Francisco, no less the United States, no less the rest of the world. In 2011, we really doubled and tripled down on making sure that we were taking care of the international user. So 2011, our games were released in English only. Uh, in 2000, in two, excuse me, in 2010 and before, 2011, uh, we started localizing our games. And in a very short period of time, we took it from releasing in English only to now we release in 16 languages, now up to 19 languages in 2012. Uh, Arabic is going to be a big area of focus for us coming up, uh, as well as Polish and Russian uh, for the balance of the year. Localization. So uh, again, this is just screenshots taken from our games that say, look, we think it's about making global games. When we get, we've been able to get to this level of scale because we make gameplay that is appeals to the mass market. And the mass market is not just you know, new demographics, but new geographies. So there are entire new areas of the world that are being brought to uh, casual games that previously just weren't involved in the sector at all. And one of the ways we've been able to do that is really make our games feel local in these global markets. And that's really our battle cry for 2012, is to become local for the global markets. Payments is the second one. Not unlike localization, prior to 2011, we were surfacing uh, offers in US dollars. Now, think about that. You know, this company is now making over a billion dollars in revenues and all that's public information. Prior to 2011, you know, if you were a player in Singapore or France or Brazil or Mumbai or uh, anywhere in Latin America, and you said, hey, Zynga, I want to give you money, we would turn around and say, great, give us your money, but you have to you have to pay us in US dollars. It just didn't make sense. So very quickly diagnosed that that was a problem and very quickly now have gone from supporting one currency, the US dollar, now supporting 27 currencies and we'll be expanding to uh, many more over the course of time. Customer service. So you know the customers really always come first for Zynga. Um, everything we do is about making sure that the customers not only enjoy the gameplay that we're putting out there, but then once the games are up and running are being supported in a way uh, that is valuable and local to them. So on the customer service side, which is one component, we have in-language support for our major languages, and we have services across chat, email, and web. And what 
we've really done is doubled and tripled down on beating, building out our customer support infrastructure in these local territories so that people aren't talking to people. People are talking to people in their native tongue rather than talking to people in English, which is invariably, for most of the world, a disastrous experience. Second component to customer support is really around our community management. And this is where, instead of reacting to problems, we're proactively reaching out to users in all of these different territories. Um, our community management team likes to talk about acti activating our global fan army. So we have 22 million international fans. Those are people who have chosen to be fans of Zynga games and we have direct communication with. Uh, one of the things I like to one of the things we like to point out is that, that the most liked uh, game, the most liked, the most liked brand on Facebook is actually Zynga Poker. Zynga Poker was our first game. It's been around for about four and a half years. It has more likes than any other fan page on Facebook. The second most liked Facebook fan page is actually Facebook's fan page. So, uh, and then finally, content. Um, there's a statistic up here, which may be a little bit hard to read, but one of the assumptions for a long time that we were making was that generic content would kind of play better to a global audience. So in other words, if you're playing, if you're playing Cityville or you're playing Farmville and you're offered something that is kind of culturally non-specific, so just a typical building or a typical crop, uh, what we would find, the assumption was, well, that's going to be more appealing because it's a little bit more sort of neutral across all these platforms. As we started doing testing around international content, we found out that actually content customized for the global markets performed better by a significant margin. So, and not just in that local market. So if we were to have uh, Indonesian themed content going through our games, it would perform, as you would expect, not only disproportionately well in Indonesia, but then it would also perform extremely well in all other territories also. So there's a real appetite for this kind of culturally specific content. And so in 2011, we sort of uncovered this, which was a real paradigm shift for the company, and a lot more of the content you're going to see coming out of our, in our games going forward is going to be uh, content relative, relevant to the global audience. There's sort of this bonus component, um, which is international branding. So didn't talk about this uh, as one of our six pillars, but it is definitely an area of focus for the company. Uh, there is, what we're finding more and more is that, that users are very excited to kind of see uh, real world brands integrated into their game experience. And what brands are seeing is an incredible amount of value that uh, that engagement with those brands can bring to them. And so uh, what we've been doing more and more, and you'll see more and more of, is you know, integrating brands into our game and experience that not only brings an extraordinary amount of value to the player, but also brings a lot of value to the brand themselves. So this is one of our, one of our geo-targeted um, case studies, which was with Coca-Cola Zero in Latin America. And what we found is over the course of a two-week campaign, in, uh, in Brazil was that 2.7 million Coca-Cola Zero factories were placed. Uh, there were 4.7 million campaign announcements, in other words, messages sent out by users uh, on behalf of the brand. And there were over 200 million interactions with the Coke Zero factory over the course of those two weeks. So that's a, that's a really big number. And at the end, you sort of had the option to put this permanent placement if you, if you got through the mastery quest. Uh, and what we found was about 50% of the people sort of wanted the brand to continue to live on in their game. Uh, we did a lot of research and we did a lot of surveys and tried to find out from customers, look, is this something you find annoying? Is this something you find interesting? And almost universally, it was something that people were really, really excited about uh, because it made their experience much more positive uh, and beneficial. So again, I, as we think about the international user, as we think about sort of the, the ways in which that we're going to bring our games to a more global audience, uh, these are kind of the main pillars that we're looking at. Access, localization, payments, customer service, community management, and content, which again, helps us connect the world through social games. Thank you very much. Enjoy your lunch, everybody.